Yeah, I got it. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Lord, we give you praise, honor, and glory for this time in your presence before your throne. I'm going to wait for some people to get on before I start the, the, uh, the day's Bible lesson. I think it's going to be one of the most powerful lessons we've ever had. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Ah, oh, yeah, they're starting to come on now. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good, worthy to be praised. There is none like you in all the earth. I want to thank God for another day. I want to thank God for another opportunity. Praise God. God is good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me get my notes together here. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, 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 good. Mm -mm -mm. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good. And he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm waiting for more to come on. I don't like starting a Bible study and not having enough people to come in so that we can all... Uh, gather what we need and get the revelation we need from God's word so that we may grow thereby. So I'm going to wait for a few more people to go on. While you're coming on, I'm going to tell you that uh, uh, our, our Jubilee Seed offering Sunday is going to be set back to August 2nd. Uh, we're believing God for a pow powerful outpouring of his presence, powerful outpouring of his grace, his mercy, his compassion in our lives. Hallelujah. Yes, thank you for coming in. Thank you for coming in. Charles, I see you out there. Can't see the screen too good from where I'm at, but I see uh, Jerome Buckley, uh, Karen Lawrence Webster. We gave God all the praise for you. Alvino Dixon is stuck, is, is uh, tuned in. Um, while you, you're coming on, uh, I want you to keep my family up in prayer. Um, uh, my... Uh, First cousin, uh, Kim, lost her husband. Uh, Bernard, he passed yesterday. And we want to keep that family up in prayer. Amen? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. God is good, 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 good. Still waiting, still waiting. Hallelujah. Still waiting. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let me get my stuff together here. As we wait for more to come on, I'm excited about today's lesson okay. because we're going to start to challenge some people with some things through the word of God as it pertains to faith. The one thing that God had told me about faith was that he wanted me to teach it with passion. He told me this in October and it was for such a time as this, that once we started teaching faith with a passion and that passion is born out of the experiences that I've gone through in life. Then what he said, once you teach, start teaching it with passion, they'll get it. Now, once they get it, then I want you to start talking about unity. Not unity, but prayer. Teach them how to pray and talk to me and realize that prayer is not a gimme session, but it's a session where we start to fellowship with God and get that relationship and fellowship with God that we need because he's our, he's our, he's our friend He's our advocate. He's all those things rolled into one. Then he told me, Ron, what I want you to do then is that I want you to teach them unity. We're going to have to be in one accord because on the other side of unity is the corporate man. Now, this I'm telling you all this before we get into today's lesson. On the other side of unity is the corporate man. And the corporate man experience that God told me about dealt with if you remember the scripture in Acts where the church came together and prayed, and while they were praying for Peter, who was in jail, in jail at the time, Peter showed up and knocked at the door. So they were in a corporate prayer moment. And before they came out of the corporate prayer moment, manifestation had taken place. God says that Jubilee for this ministry, Jubilee for this year and this decade in this church, is going to be just like that in the lives of each and every individual in this place. Praise God. God is good. 
So I'm going to start with prayer and we're going to get started. Let's pray. Bow our heads, please. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we bless your name as we enter into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We thank we are thankful to you and we bless your name. Father, we declare your lordship today over our lives. We thank you for your faithfulness to us. We thank you for your faithfulness to be El Elyon, our most high. We thank you for your faithfulness to be El Shaddai, the God of more than enough. We thank you for your faithfulness to be our healer, our deliverer, our shepherd, our peace, and the fact that you are always there for us gives us pause and we're very thankful for it in jesus name lord i thank you for revelation knowledge of your word and that the teaching anointing on my life increases to your glory thank you father in the name of jesus for revelation knowledge from the word as i minister the word boldly to all who are assigned to this ministry to my family to my church to those churches and pastors of whom I have been sent and to our streaming congregation, your will is coming to pass in my life on the canvas of my imagination and Jubilee is manifested in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What we've been talking about is faith for a time of crisis or in a time of crisis. And, uh, I'm going to start by talking to you again, like as I did Sunday, about Mark chapter 4, verse 24 through 34. Powerful scripture there. Um, it's the story of the woman with the issue of blood. She was a noble woman who had spent all she had on doctors hoping they could heal her of her disease that caused her to bleed or hemorrhage and had been doing that for 12 years. Because of her condition, she was labeled as unclean. And other than seeing her doctor, she was separated from her people. Twelve years it is. The Bible tells us in Psalms that vain is or was the help of man. In other words, there are things that come up in our life that we, only Jesus can answer for us. Hallelujah. He'll use men, but Jesus always has the answer for us. Can I get an amen for that? Mark chapter 5, verse 27 tells us that she got an answer for her personal crisis. She got an answer. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that she heard Jesus. She heard the word. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and that word that was with God was Jesus. Hallelujah. She heard about how he had delivered the man who dwelled among the tombs. She had heard this. She heard about those who had pressed up against him to touch him and were made whole. Mm. She heard about those who had pressed up against him to touch him, and, and there was a whole multitude of people. And the Bible says he healed them all. Yes, yes, she believed. Hallelujah. And so now, she believes the word, then she says something very profound. She says, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I'm in a crisis. 12 years I've been bleeding. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, 12 years, and I'm broke, busted, disgusted, and I'm still not healed. healed. 12 years I've been going through this. I'm in a personal crisis situation. I need a touch from the Lord. If I could just touch the hem of his garment, I'll be made whole. So this woman had heard the word. This woman believed the word. This woman confessed the word in the midst of her crisis. So she makes her way and presses through the crowd unnoticed to touch the garment of Jesus. Tell me, it took endurance and patience to weave herself through the crowd, knowing that really she wasn't supposed to be there, that she was supposed to be separated from the people because of her condition. But she was fixed on this thing. She wanted that touch from God. So she weaved herself and pressed herself through the crowd unnoticed and touched his garment. And the Bible says the power of the word hit her and she was made whole. Praise God. So she acted on that word. Hallelujah. Now, 
This also happened in the sword for Peter in Acts chapter 5, where Peter's shadow came on many and they were healed. Hallelujah. This type of thing also happened at Paul or with Paul in Acts chapter 5, verse 15, where, where the people took handkerchiefs and aprons from Paul. And the Bible says there was a special, there were special miracles that took place and they were all healed. So Jesus knew some that power to the, or excuse me, Jesus knew that the power to heal that had, had come out of him. Mm. Hallelujah. And they had pulled at him. And he asked the question. And when he asked that question, his disciples thought he had lost his mind. He asked the question, who touched me? Hallelujah. Who touched me? Because something went out of me. Who touched me? See, when you get in contact with the word of God, no matter what you're going through, if you fellowship with God and get in God's word, there is power in the word of God to deliver you from anything that may be arising in your life. The power that is in the word of God will transform every crisis situation you have, every circumstance, and any, every other situation that comes against you and it violates the word of God. Hallelujah. So disciples thought he was asking a dumb question. Just said, with all these people around you, you mean to tell me you, you asking who touched you? Hallelujah. The woman <laughs> came to him. Hallelujah. Trembling. Because she knew for the first time in 12 years she was, she was, she was healed and delivered, set free. And he looked at the woman. He said something that's even more powerful to her. He said, your faith has gotten you through this crisis. He says, your faith has made you whole. Now, Jesus, was it was quite common for him to say that. Jesus said the same thing to the, to the blind man in Acts chapter 10. He said, that faith has made you whole. He said the same thing to the woman who was wrapped in sin, that the Pharisees thought, thought was out of her mind to even try, hallelujah, to, 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 to come against uh, uh, the dictates and the teachings of the Pharisees. So what she, so 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 she was wrapped with pain. Hallelujah, and uh, 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 God healed her and forgave her. Jesus said the same thing to the blind man in Acts chapter eighteen. That faith has made you whole. So for twelve years, this woman endured a personal crisis. So now. Uh, we've been talking about, again, faith in a time of crisis. And what we've been endeavoring to do is get you to a point where you can walk by faith, not by sight, and no matter what, see a move of God in your life like never before. Faith, again, is simply acting on what you believe. is the supernatural power of God made available through you, whereby you can change your situation, circumstances, and conditions in life based on the expressed will of God. Faith for our study is a systematic spiritual process that you use to tap into the supernatural power of God. I also told you in time past that the faith process or the mechanics of systematic faith involve asking by faith in Jesus name, biblically believing, making a faith confession is number three, demonstrate the word of God, and have do endurance or patience to see the process through. I also told you that while you're operating in the process of faith, you ought, to have, you ought to have a heightened expectation that what God said is happening for you. Hallelujah. So now you, you got to understand again, and I'm just going through a little bit of review of a review. You got to understand that he gives us a plan of action that God has obligated himself, if I work this process and I walk by faith, not by sight, and I start developing this patience to wait on God, to follow the process, I'm not going to quit no matter what, that God will give me, listen to this, a plan of action, or he'll show me his favor, or he'll give me his wisdom, or he'll give me or perform a miracle, and he'll always give me strength to endure until change comes. 
So for this lesson today, one of the things I want to remind you of is that faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. That according to 1 Timothy chapter 6, verse 12, the word of God is designed. The word of God has been given to us to teach us doctrine or teach us the established order of God. That is designed to reprove us or help us to dismantle off thinking. If you off, the only one of the things that will help you to get on is getting in the Word of God. Number three is that the Word of God is designed to correct us. That's the assimilation of truth into our thinking. Number four, the, the Word of God is designed to give us instruction in righteousness. That's the systematic way we have or learn to operate in the Word of God. Now, Matthew or Romans chapter 12, verse 3 talks about something that's very profound. It talks about the fact that God has given each of us the measure of faith. Hallelujah. And you, you got to understand that there are degrees of faith. Now, God gives all of us the same measure, but the word of God tells us there are degrees of faith. And I'm going to explain that to you for a moment. And uh, uh, hopefully you'll get a, a revelation and understanding of it as the Holy Spirit gives it to me. There are three basic levels of faith that we're going to talk about. Levels. Not kinds of faith, but levels. There's little faith. Everybody say little faith. And uh, you go to uh, Luke chapter 12, verse 28, it says, If then God so clothed the grass, which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven, how much more? Will he clothe you, O oh, you of little faith? And so now, little faith, everybody say little faith. Little faith is the state of flawed priorities. It's being in a state of flawed priorities where everything that you can think of to keep your life rolling the way it is takes precedence over the word of God. It's a position that I hold where I have developed or created or grabbed onto false priorities or flawed priorities in my life. Say praise the Lord. The second type of faith, if you want to call it that, is called no faith. So the first one was little faith. I took that from Luke chapter 12, verse 28. Thank God. The second type of faith is no faith at all. Jesus and the disciples are in a storm, and the storm is raging. And just think about this. The disciples are on the boat. They're viewing the storm. They're full of fear. Jesus is down in the stern of the ship, sleep. Now, before they got in the boat, Jesus said, let us go to the other side. So the word said, let us go to the other side. So the word said, we are on the other side. The word said nothing's going to stop us from being on the other side because I said it. So then the word rests on what he said. He's asleep. Now then, while he's sleeping, the storm is raging, water's getting in the boat, the disciples are in fear. They're about ready to, to just panic, or they are panicking. And so they go down in the stern and they upset with Jesus. Man, wake up. Don't you see we're, you know, we're in a bad state here? What you want? Want all of us to die? Jesus goes up top. He rebukes the storm. <laughs> he said, peace be still. You know what? He said, peace be quiet. He told the elements, just be quiet. And everything just settled right down. Now, his disciples were afraid because of the storm. They were even more afraid when they saw him rebuke the winds and tell everything to be quiet and everything settled down. The Bible says that Jesus told them that they had, <laughs> he said, why are you so fearful? How is it that you have no faith? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So now, there's little faith, there's no faith. Then Romans chapter 4, verse 12, 
tells us that Abraham did not waver at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strengthened in faith, giving glory to God. And that's when God told him that him and his wife were going to have a son, and he's almost 100, and she's 90. So ain't nothing operating right at that age. But he tells him they're going to have a son. He changes Abram's name to Abraham, which means the father of many, basically. He, says, he changes Sarai's name to Sarah, which means, means mo mother of a multitude. And for 25 years, he's got them confessing that over their lives. Hallelujah. Well, as we know through the scripture, they had a son. Now, two things I want you to know. Number one, God could have gave them the son the moment he ministered to them about having one. But now, God only operates through faith. So God had to build faith in both Abraham and Sarah before he could bring the child to them. Praise God. The second thing I want you to understand is that Abram, now listen to this, because most of us think that the best that God does for us is what we can think in our minds, but God does goes above and beyond what we can ask or think. Abram or Abraham was thinking of one son. When God blessed him and God prophesied over him and Sarah to have a son, God was thinking about nations. Abraham was thinking about one. God was thinking about nations. Hallelujah. So now, when you dreamed your biggest dreams, when you planned your best or you've laid out your best laid plans and you present them to God, God will say, is that all? So you should never limit God when it comes to blessing you. Hallelujah. So now, I'm going to give you a universal axiom of truth. The, 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 excuse me, the, degree, the degrees of faith have more to do with the development state of a person's faith and not in the endowment of the measure of faith. Say it again. The degrees of faith I just talked about, little, no, strong faith, the degrees of faith have more to do with the development state of the person's faith, individual person's faith, and not in the endowment of the measure of faith. The endowment of the measure of faith is Romans chapter 12, verse 3. To each of us, uh, of us is given the measure of faith or the same measure of faith when we give our lives to the Lord. But the degrees, and I'm saying it again because I want you to understand it, the degrees of faith have more to do with the developmental state of a person's faith and not in the endowment of the measure of faith. Oh, that sounds good. Praise the Lord. And so now, why is it that some people have little faith, some have no faith? And I, I, I can tell you some things as to why that happens. But uh, or, or some people have strong faith. It seems like some people always get their prayers answered and some people just seem to just scratch the surface and some have really just got, gave, given up on faith, you know. And so we're going to explore that just a little bit. I'm going to take my time to go through it because it's vitally important, especially in the time of crisis. See, because what happens is that people turn from God because of unanswered prayer. That's the biggest reason why people turn from God, unanswered prayer. And I'm here to tell you that God answers all prayer. But now, all prayer meaning if it's done correctly. But if it's not done correctly, that, that, you know, you, you're going to have some problems. So these teachings are designed to help you get to the point where you can perfect this process. So that whenever you break, uh, throw a prayer up, you know and understand and realize and have a great expectation that it's already done. And you see the manifestation in your life. Hallelujah. So now, uh, there are var variables that come along that can diminish your faith. Now think about it. The disciples that spent time with Jesus, they saw all the miracles, and yet, yet, fear overran them. Fear overtook them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And wait a minute. The fear overtook them, and they were with Jesus. Mm. So now, I got to understand that the variables 
are there that can diminish one's faith. Now, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, variables in the context of this lesson are those things that have the potential to influence the expected outcome of your faith process. I ask by faith, believing, hallelujah. I, I, I biblically believe God's word. I believe for fact that which I have no sense realm knowledge of, but I don't lose my common sense. Number three, I faithfully confess God's word, God's word, God's word. Not CNN, not MSNBC and all this stuff that's going on. You got to continually confess God's word over your life, over your family, over your job, over your ministry, whatever it is. Then you, you have to demonstrate God's word. You have to act like you got it before you get it because you do it every day of the week. Then last but not least, you need some patience, endurance, patience and endurance. Faith starts where the will of God is known, but manifestation begins when the will of God is done. Okay. There's a difference between the known and the done. Got it? There's a, a difference between the known and the done. To know it is one thing, and that's where my faith starts, but the done state comes through obedience and patience as I walk by faith, not by sight. Oh, that, 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 that's good. So, uh, <laughs> the variables in the context of this lesson are those things that have the potential to influence the expected, listen to this, to influence the expected outcome of the faith process. So I got four or five things here that I want you to really listen to. Now, if it's, if it's you, just, just repent and come on, let's do this thing. But now the first thing, I may spend a little bit more time with it, and I may be on it for the rest of this lesson, and I'll have to pick up next week. But now, listen to this very carefully. Uh, one of the variables that can diminish your faith is sin. Because sin kills the benefits of righteousness. Hmm. Okay. And let's face it. The key to overcoming sin is repentance. So it's repentance that deals with this variable that can diminish my faith. Now, by grace we are saved through faith. And it's not of, us, of ourselves, but it's a gift of God. Hmm. Now, for the longest, listen to this very carefully because I'm going to go there. For the longest, uh, a lot of people have started to uh, uh, take this grace thing to a different level. And uh, a lot of teachers had started to take this grace thing to an erroneous level. Now, the Bible tells us uh, we fight, we fight, we fight the good fight of faith. So now, I'm going to start talking about this a little bit more, but I'm telling you, it's, 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 it's about a three, four week study. Uh, do not listen to any grace teacher that tells you that you do not have to put forth effort to fight the good fight of faith. See, because... That kind of teaching has confused the, the church, has confused the body of Christ. See, we've got this notion now that once we get saved and we become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, we got to take it to everything and we don't have to do anything. We don't have to live holy. We can mess up when we want it because God loves us. God's got this thing. Some people believe you don't even have to confess Jesus as Lord of your life to be saved. You're already saved. Okay, you don't have to pray. Okay, so we're going to talk about it just a little bit today. Now, grace, what is grace? Grace is the unmerited favor of God, whereby you gain the righteousness or right standing with God without your worth, without your value, without having to do anything for it. So God then, what God is doing is that through his son, Jesus, <laughs> he gives by grace he gives us access to righteousness I'm going to say it again 
It's by grace that we gain access to righteousness. Righteousness is right standing with God. Okay? But now, we still have to obey God and operate in the principles found in his word. Now, I had a real powerful verse that I wanted to, wanted to share with you. Listen to this very carefully. I'm reading from 1 John chapter 3 because a lot of people think that because of this grace message, I'm going to heaven no matter what. No matter what I do. All I need to do is just get saved. After that, do what I want to do. Go where I, where I want to go. Do the things I want to do. Just And I just, if I want to do them, and I'm just, I'm going to go to heaven anyhow. But that ain't the way it is. Now listen to this. It says in 1 John chapter 3. Wow. It says, No one who abides in him who remains united in fellowship with God, deliberately, knowingly, and habitually practices sin. No one who habitually, habitually sins has seen him or know him. Little children, believers, dear ones, do not let anyone lead you astray. The one who practices righteousness, so wait a minute, you got to practice righteousness. So that's word. Practice you mean I got to practice? Yeah, you got to practice living the word, man. You have to practice keeping your flesh under. Listen to this. <laughs> ah, this is good. No, the, the one who practices righteousness, the one who strives to live a consistently honorable life in private, in private, in private, as well as in public, and to conform to God's precepts is righteous, just as he is righteous. The one who practices sin, separating himself from God and offending him, offending him by acts of disobedience, indifference or rebellion is of the devil and takes his inner character and moral values from him, but not me. God said, you don't get that from me. For the devil has sinned and violated God's word from the beginning. The son of man appeared for this purpose. To destroy the works of the devil. No one who is born of God deliberately, knowingly, and habitually, habitually practices sin. Because God's seed, praise God, his principle of life, the essence of his righteous character remains permanently in him. Who is born again. Who is reborn from above. Spiritually transformed. Renewed, praise God, in his mind and set apart for his purpose. He who, listen to this, he, he is born of God and longs, longs, longs to please God. This is from the Amplified. Longs to please God or please him. By this, the children of God and the children of the devil are clearly defined. Anyone who does not practice righteousness, practice, 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 practice. Practice his work. Practice, practice, practice. Huh. <laughs> uh, who does not seek God's will in thought, action, purpose, is not of God, nor is the one who does not unselfishly love his believing brother. <sighs> and I got a little excited about that because I've seen people come to me with this grace message and they got it all out of whack. They got it all out of whack. Because this tells me that I still got to practice the principles found in the word of God. I got to obey his word. Now in the extreme teaching of grace that a lot of people have fallen for but will not reap the results is, fo is founded on I do not have to do anything, just be saved. Give my life to the Lord, and I can do my own thing. I told you that earlier. <laughs> now, if that case is real, think of this. If that's right, think of this. You didn't, <laughs> you didn't do it right in the first place, and you still don't have anything. And if you have been off all this time and did not have to do, <laughs> do what <laughs> you did, then you ought to have, you ought to have something. Y'all get it? <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I'm going to slow it down. 
Okay, think about this. You didn't, you did not do it right in the first place. Faith. And you still don't have anything. Now, if you you have been off, because faith didn't work for you, if you've been off all this time and did not have to do what you did, then you ought to have something. Okay. See, proven faith teachers. <laughs> Uh, oh boy. Proven faith teachers say things like, we thank God for his grace and favor. It is by grace I am made righteous. But because of what I have, not because of what I've done, but because of what he has done through me. By his grace, I hold on to my righteousness because it was not by works that I achieved it. It was a gift of God. Now, one of the reasons why this grace message got so popular was because many times when a person has not had the victory they wanted by faith, they got to blame somebody. They do. They have to blame the teacher, the teaching, or the church, or y'all. Got to blame somebody. When in reality, if they just went back and checked some things, in their lives, they would have realized it wasn't faith that failed them. It was them that failed faith. They compromised it. Hallelujah. And so that's what that's what that's what we need to understand that when it comes to something like besetting sins, I gotta clean up my act. God can't do much for me until I do. Hallelujah. Although He wants to, all He wants to, He loves you dearly. But there's some things that you just gotta repent for. Hallelujah. So when I ask you, I ask God for, for things, I want my slate clean. When you ask God for something, you want your slate clean. Hallelujah. But you got to believe that in your heart. You believe it by faith in your heart. Say praise the Lord. Because if I keep asking God to forgive me and I don't really mean it, my heart will harden. The Bible says my conscience will, be, will become sheared. You, you understand what I'm saying? And so I would be going through the motions, but not really wanting forgiveness. And that's, that's a sad state. That's when I started hitting this backslidden state. Now, the bottom line is this. In other words, you know, for me to think some of the things that the grace teaching says, I'm going to have to throw away the Bible. You know, they say you don't have to obey God. Hmm. You don't need the Bible. <laughs> if all I need to do is to get saved and God is going to bless me anyhow, then I don't need the Bible. I mean, think about it. If God's going to bless me anyhow, you know, <laughs> then I don't need the Bible. Hmm. Then some say, like I told you earlier, I don't have to pray. But when you say, I don't have to pray, that God's got this thing, man, I ain't got to pray. I just got to just, you know, just go and do what I'm going to do and just believe that Jesus is, 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 you know, confess Jesus is my Savior and everything's going to be all right and uh, uh, to heck with everything else, you know. I don't, I'm not going to do that church thing, you know. I'm, I'm going to teach myself from home and... Uh, uh, you know, uh, soak up a little praise on TV and a little worship on TV and then I'm going to teach myself, you know, I don't need to do that church thing because I'm already saved. I'm already, I'm all, I've already made it. I punched my ticket. <laughs> but then, if you tell me I don't have to pray, then you tell me to throw away the word of God which says, ask and it shall be given unto you, seek and you shall find it. Then another verse says, I have not because I asked not. So now, uh, grace gives me access to righteousness. Now listen to this very carefully because this is, it gets kind of deep. Now, there are basically two types of righteousness. There is performance righteousness. In, in other words, in you doing what, what is right, and that's what I read you from 1 John chapter 3, verse 7 through 10, then there is positional righteousness. 
That's the righteousness I got when I gave, by grace, I gave my life to the Lord. Hmm. But the Bible tells me in Acts chapter 10, verse 35, that I got to work this thing. I got to work that righteousness. Huh. But now, it's that grace that sets up that righteousness that brings all the benefits of God's word to me. But we walk by faith, not by sight. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. No word, no faith. I can't exercise the benefits of righteousness. Can I get an amen on that? Hallelujah. So there's performance righteousness. There's positional righteousness. And again, righteousness is right standing with God and the ability to stand before a God without guilt, shame, embarrassment, or condemnation. Got it? But now, if I'm not working this thing, then it doesn't work for me. Oh, God is good. I hope you're getting something out of this. Amen? I hope you're getting something out of this. And so now, then you can, you can say this. There are two other types of righteousness. If I want to put them under one, two categories, there's self-righteousness and sovereign righteousness. Got it? Self-righteousness and sovereign righteousness. And so we'll get into more of that later. I'm going to finish some of this that in the first, and, I, and uh, we'll get back to it. I know that's good, got you all tantalized and ready to go and ready to get, get more of this, but uh, we're going to wait. I, I tenderize the state now. I'm going to start giving you a little more as we go on in this faith study. Because a lot of times what's keeping us from God's best is the erroneous information we've been hearing. And that erroneous information is, is starving away what God wants to do in our lives. Uh, <clears throat> it's like a glass with water in it. How I want to say this. I want you to get this example that I'm going to tell you. I got my thermal here, so I'm going to show you this. This thermal represents my beliefs, my tradition. Everything that makes me who I am now with my unrenewed mind self in some areas, okay, and my renewed mindset in others, okay. Now, what, what happens for a person who is so stuck in, 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 in tradition, so stuck in this is the way I do things. Now, I got water in here now, so I'm not going to do it that kind of example. But now, what a person like that does is that, they, now listen to this very carefully. They take the word, this is what I believe. This is what my tradition has told me. This is what my environment has taught me. This is what credible others taught, told me that, 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 I, that I agree with. This is the, 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 uh, uh, what my emotional state has presented to me because of the experiences I've gone through in life. So what I do is that I bring this empty container to the church or in, in the presence of God, and I take my water, and the water is the word, and I pour the water in the container. But now, I'm not giving anything. Oh, I'm not giving anything. I'm not swelling anywhere. I'm not busting a hole in my old belief and belief system nowhere. So I'm telling the world, you're going to have to conform to what I believe right now. And so what I do is that I look for scripture and I look for things that justify not challenging what I'm putting the word in. Hmm. And it keeps me from growing. It keeps me from growing. That's why God says, you know what? I can, re I, can, I can regenerate your spirit. But I'm not going to do anything about your mind. That's something you're going to have to deal with. You're going to have to deal with how you think. But I'm going to give you all the tools to change how you think. But it's up to you to want to do it. Say praise the Lord. See, some people... Uh, 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 it's like some people view the word of God like getting in a hot tub 
what they do is that they put their toe in the, in the water and it's too hot. So what they do is that they water it down and make it cooler before they get in. When really, the way you are, you need to get it at a boiling state and jump on in there and allow the word of God to melt away all those impurities and melt away all those things that have kept you from God's best. Amen. And so, so, so it's important that I understand that these, there are diminishing, there are things that diminish my faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. One other thing, and I, I told you I may not get through all of them. One other thing that can d diminish my faith, okay, is my will. Hallelujah. God does not impose his will on others. Got it? Okay. The key to changing a per or getting a person to change their will is going to be intercessory prayer. It's going to be intercessory prayer because the will of man is the most dominant factor controlling earth's affairs because God created man with a free will and does, and listen to this, and does respects man's willful choice. He will respect your choice. He'll respect your choice to want to go to heaven. He'll respect your choice to want to go to hell. But he's not going to violate your will. The only thing that can change the will of a person is the saints <laughs> interceding for that person. That's the only thing that's going to do it. You can't talk them out of it. You can't talk them into it. You're going to have to allow the word of God to change how they think. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. There was the, I'll close with this. Uh we have an opportunity through this streaming process to, exa to examine ourselves in the confines of our own living rooms or wherever you may be listening to this program. And it's time now for us to make an honest assessment of our, our lives. If God's bringing Jubilee, and he is, we, getting un we are getting uh, many testimonies of people already starting to experience it. Whether it's protection, we had three accidents where cars were total out, our people walked away from them. We've, we've, we've seen people get blessed, people got more money now than they ever had. And that ain't all. People are getting healed, delivered, and set free. Jubilee has started. And so I gotta understand that, that if, if I wanna take part in Jubilee, and up till now, my blessings have been trickling down and they're not coming with the, the, with the, with the, uh, 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 in the continuity and the frequency that I would like, you know, you know, I might get one this year and then one next year, one next. No, God wants to do more for you. And so now I see even more. So now how important these type of studies are, because again, God had me talking faith in October. He told me if you teach it with passion, they'll get it. Then he told me, after you teach faith, go to prayer. Teach them how to individually pray. Let them know there are seven types of prayers. And some of my people are just not praying right. I want to do for them, but they're sticking to the wrong process. He said, so teach them how to pray. Teach them how to connect their faith to their prayers. Teach them what makes their faith inhabit the prayers of the saints. And see, then he said, then what I want you to do is that I want you to create unity in that in your body. Create unity in the church. Get the people on one mind, one accord. Do that. And once you do that, I'm going to do the same thing with this church. I'm going to do the same thing. Listen to this. I'm going to do the same thing with this church and with the individuals and the families in this church that the church did when they prayed for Peter when he was in jail. And I said this at the beginning of, of, of the, the, the uh, study. I'm going to say it at the end. He said the church came together and prayed. They had gotten Peter. They had already killed James. Somebody could have said, well, we might as well get ready for, for, for Peter's funeral too because, hey, he's going to be the next one. No, they didn't do that. They got together and they prayed in one accord, in unity. That corporate man came together. And it wasn't long before... Peter knocked on the door. And the girl answered the door and, door and couldn't believe it was Peter. She ran and told somebody else, hey, Peter's at the door. 
We were praying for him and he showed up at the door. I'm telling you that if we get this thing right, God's going to show up at the door of every individual. They're going to show up at the door of the church and you're going to see a move of God like never before. Because it's Jubilee, this virus cannot touch your house. Because it's Jubilee, this virus cannot come in your dwelling. Because where you step and where you sit is holy ground. And he dare not and violate that ground. God bless you and looking forward to seeing you. Again, because I miss all of you. Now, what we're going to do at this time is that we're going to pray for those who need healing. I want you to stick with me just a touch longer. I want to thank all of you who joined us today. But I believe God wants to heal, heal you. Hallelujah. I don't care what it is. God already, already has the answer for your condition. Hallelujah. So I want here's what I want you to do. I want you to raise your hands toward the, your screen or just raise your hand. Tell you what, raise your hands to God. Hallelujah. And I want you to repeat, repeat this after me. Say, Father, I thank you for your faithfulness to, 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 excuse me, I thank you for your faithfulness to be El Elyon, the Most High God, he who has the last word. I thank you for your faithfulness to be Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals. Father, I thank you for the promises of health in your word and for our lives. Father, in the name of Jesus, your word is medicine to my flesh, and I declare by the stripes of Jesus that we are made whole. Jesus, thank you for bearing our sickness and disease on the cross, and we receive health and healing now in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I speak to my body. And I command every nerve, every cell, every organ to function according to your created design. I command my heart, my lungs, my liver, my organs, my blood, my eyes, and my pancreas to function normally to keep me in health and comfort in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you that you satisfy my mouth with good things and my youth is, excuse me, and my youth and mine are renewed day by day like the eagle that I am. Lord, I thank you that you are satisfying me with long life and I decree and declare I will live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Why don't you give God a praise now? Hallelujah. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your healing. Father, we give you praise for it now in Jesus' name. We thank you for healing us. Hallelujah. Healing us all. We call it done according to your word, Lord. We stand on your word. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We thank you for being El Elyon, the most high. You who has the last word. You said in your word, by his stripes we were healed. We thank and praise you, Father, for, having, for being Jehovah Rapha in our lives. The Lord that healed us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, if you like, if this message has been a blessing to you, we're going to show you some, uh, give you some ways in which you can uh, sow seed into this ministry. Hallelujah. Your seed may leave your hand, but it never leaves your life. Hallelujah. Uh, here at New Covenant, uh, our people have been doing an excellent job. I mean, we've been sowing that seed, and I, I believe that there is going to be a jubilee experience. Hallelujah. For each and every member here from this day forward in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Or even and, in, and behind and beyond. So now, if you if you if you like to give, uh, they're going to put some things on the screen there so that you can follow those instructions and give. If you're a member, you can go to Church by Mobile. We have members that use that that vehicle for giving into the ministry. You can go to, to your uh, the cash app and our cash tag is cash. New Covenant CCC1. That's Cash New Covenant CCC1. Or you can mail your 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 gifts uh, uh, or your offerings and your gifts of love to uh, uh, New Covenant Christian Center, 2395 South Outer Drive, here in the Sag in Saginaw, Michigan, 48601. Or you can bring it by the church. We have a receptacle in the hall, uh, just in the lobby near the uh, classrooms and the bookstore, right on the right, uh, left-hand, right-hand side of the wall where you can give 
drop your offering off out there, hallelujah, anytime, any day, or you can bring it and give it to, uh, uh, to our workers here who are here, just basically from nine to two on a daily basis. God bless you, hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the precious name of Jesus, we thank you for this time in your presence before your throne. As we go our separate ways, we thank, take this word with us, and we thank you for the growth. We thank you for the growth. We thank you for the correction. We thank you for the revelation. We thank you for the illumination of your word in our lives. We thank and praise you that we walk by faith, not by sight. And as our motto is all this year and beyond, no matter what, no matter what, we walk by faith, not by sight. In the face of a bad report, we walk by faith, not by sight. God bless you. And again, glad to have had you with us. Join us again Sunday where we'll have a powerful time in the Lord. God bless.